Hello YouTube. Um, I hope all of our friends have had a good week and everything's going good and smooth for everybody. Uh, I've been sick here for quite a bit of spell of time and I think we've narrowed it down that I've got a couple of different types of infections going on, but uh, I'm treating everything with some good heavy duty antibiotics and started that yesterday and I'm feeling better today. Uh, even though I'm not feeling well, uh, I'm feeling better today than I have in weeks. So I find, I'm so thankful to the good Lord for that. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about young athletes, really in general, but obviously focused to young boxers. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about, with concerns to the young boxers, um, the minuses that you guys don't have that that we had when I was a kid, uh, many 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 moons ago, and uh, I I am not a product of the 80s or the 90s. Uh, I'm a product of the 60s and into the 70s. So I've been around a little while. Um, I was reared by people that were reared in the 1930s and 1920s. Uh, so I even come from, the, you know, the term everybody uses old school from a school older than even my age. And I'm going to talk about some things that are lacking today that the young athlete is not getting uh, that, that I see and I observe. So, and of course, this doesn't mean everyone, but in, from what I've seen and what I've observed, it, it does mean. So, uh, but not everyone. Uh, I'm seeing today that so many young athletes that have the potential for greatness being turned away, uh, being belittled, not being built up, not being told that with their persistence and hard work, the sky's the limit, uh, not being told continue uh, at all costs and re reap whatever reward you can obtain through building your body your mind and your soul. Uh, a lot of a lot of young people are getting turned away. Uh, we're living in a very offendful society that is left unchecked. Uh, there's the, the checks and balances that e existed in my, my teen years and and preteen years do not exist any longer. Um, Trainers and or coaches, no matter how you want to label them, uh, are not building kids up properly in general. It's not everyone, so don't think I'm offending everyone and saying this is just fitting everybody. But I'm seeing the number grow uh, in the malpractices of trainers and coaches. Um, they are not qualified uh, through experience to be able to see a future good or great athletic capabilities. Uh, they're, un they're unable, even when they have a great athlete walk in the gym door, to... Uh, even help that kid build upon what he does have. 
and that's a that's a shame. It's a shame. A lot of the common sense is gone in the sport of boxing and in sports in general. And uh, the grit, determination, the continuing through pain, a sickness, it's non-existent any longer. Um, this is society's fault, young athletes, young boxers. This is not your fault. So I'm going to give some suggestions to young athletes, specifically young boxers. You need, you should, you ought uh, study the history of the sport. Go back, listen to the stories of these older guys uh, pre-1980s, pre-1980s. Uh, there's a lot of good things in the 80s and some good things in the 90s that you'll find and you'll see. Uh, but for a whole boatload of good things, go back pre-1980s. So in other words, look at the 70s, the 60s, 50s, and 40s, 30s, and 20s. Look, read what these guys said. or In a lot of cases on YouTube, you can sit and just listen to these these guys listen to the boxers listen to the trainers of the 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s and into the 70s uh, these guys had put things in very simple terms uh, their trainers the people that taught them and in some cases you, you can find trainers and listen to them uh, and, and or coaches, depending upon what you want to call them. Uh, listen to what they had to say. Everything was more direct back then. Had a lot less profanity, laced nonsense to it. Uh, a lot less ignorant ego. Ego can be a great thing, but ignorant ego, as you see today, uh, is just that, blatant ignorance. And go back and look and study the history of the sport, what these trainers were doing and saying, what these boxers were doing and saying. Uh, look to the past, uh, because young boxer. There's going to come a lot of the time where you're going to have to educate yourself. Uh, it's getting to a point there's not a guy over there or a guy over there to be able to teach you many, many things. Uh, with concerns to every, with concerns to everything from technique to uh, uh, building your body, building the endurance of your body developing and molding the character of your heart, uh, developing uh, monumental determination in your thought process. Uh, there's nobody there today. Uh, you can't sit and listen to, and there's a lot of great motivational music songs and There'll be a guy shouting in the background, you can do the extra mile. You can swim the English Channel. You can go across the Pacific in a rowboat. There's a lot of good motivational stuff out there. I'm not talking really about motivation. I'm talking about building great character, uh, uh, a, a strong, strong heart and soul with a determined mind to go along with it. And if you have those two key things, uh, you can build your body into what you it needs to be to achieve the goals that you have. Uh, where everybody's lacking in something. And trainers and gym owners and coaches today, the problem they have is is ignorance. Uh, instead of looking at a, at a kid and ascertaining 
the strengths with the weaknesses and figuring coming up with with plans to build the weaknesses of the athlete uh, while promoting the strengths in front of the weaknesses to cup the weaknesses and things that maybe cannot be built or cannot just can just minimally be improved uh, to mask and deter the weakness. A case in point, Larry Holmes. Uh, Larry Holmes, a great longtime uh, world champion. Uh, he was told for a long time, you've got no legs, kids. You're too small. You're too small. you got no legs. Uh, Larry, at points of hearing that, Larry was always a fast, fast, monumentally fast, striking heavyweight. But people got with Larry Holmes, and, uh, and later on in Larry's career, uh, when Larry faced the great Jerry Cooney, who does not get credit, uh, a lot of people, myself included, thought Jerry Cooney was just going to land blast, uh, land blast Larry Holmes in, within three rounds. Uh, we all did. Uh, but uh, uh, Larry went and got the oldest guy he had around that he knew uh, and paid this guy $1 million uh, to be in his corner for that one night. An uh, unheard of amount of money back in 83, I believe, when they had to fight 82 or, eight, yeah, 82 or 83 unheard of amount of money even to make a million dollars off a fight was big big stuff and to pay a corner man a million dollars you come in i want you in my corner that night and he got ray arcel to come in he knew that the old man in the corner was going to be able to see exactly what was going on and tell him what to do to counter what the big, huge giant of the time, uh, heavy Mike Tyson-esque type of puncher, uh, he knew the old man Ray Arcel could tell him what to do. And nobody's looking for these things now. I, I see a lot of very excellent boxing analysts, uh, technical people online. I see a whole lot. Uh, the guy, uh, Anthony Joshua's went to this guy and people are saying, well, he's going to teach him to do this, teach him to do that. Uh, you get broken as a fighter. Anthony Joshua doesn't need anyone to help him with technique. Anthony Joshua needs training right now from someone who can encapsulate him and push him emotionally to get him out of the break that he's in right now. And he is broken. Anthony Joshua is a broken fighter right now. There's nobody to go to, young fighters. There's nowhere to go now. Uh, uh, there's no Ford to go to. There's no uh, our sale. And I, you could just keep naming off names uh, of folks to go to. Um, Although I'm not a huge Dundee fan, but there's no Dundee to go to. Uh, young boxers, there's a lot of things that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Uh, you are going to have to keep your eyes open and your ears closed sometimes. Uh, because there's a lot of misinformation going around. Uh, a lot of ignorance is abounding in the sport of boxing right now and all sports in general and in humanity in general. Um, you are coming up in a world where the most masculine sport there is, really, if you think about it, boxing, uh, is trying to survive in a feminine world. Uh, masculinity is getting thrown in the garbage can. You're being told 
Uh, if you have an ego, everybody has a problem with you. I can beat anyone on this planet. I am the best at my weight. Uh, people get offended by that. Well, no, he's not. We got to, you know, they gave all of us on the soccer team trophies. Uh, boxing's not that. See, it's a way different ball game. And uh, so those are just a few things. Uh, a lot of things, uh, uh, fathers are being detached from their kids. And therefore, fathers are being detached from athletics with their children, uh, which is creating a societal breakdown with coaching and training in general. Um, there's more than one ways to skin a cat. I holler. That's typically what I do. Uh, it's rare, but when when the occasion calls for it, uh, let me tell all of you something. The old trainer in the first and second Rocky movie, I can put him to shame when I start hollering. Put almost anybody to shame. Uh, it's rare that I do that, but I'm open to do it at any moment, at any any given day or time. Uh, there, folks aren't challenging anyone any longer. I, I said... Joe and his training partner down the other day and got him to perform a, uh, a calisthenic exercise. And they both were, how, you know, how many do you want us to do? I said, until one of you quits. Until the first one of you quits. Uh, 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 I, do, I do things like, uh, and young trainers, you should pick up on these things too. Uh, I'll go in, I'll have two or three guys, two guys, I'll say, you guys are goats. Like, oh, he's calling us the greatest of all times, goats. I'm like, but you're not that kind of goats. You're goats. You're good for nothing. You could go out there and eat, 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 and clean a field of grass up. You're that kind of goats. And, you know, Yahweh, I always get a chuckle when I do that, but I always get an attitude behind it. We're going to show him we're not that kind of goat. And they'll start showing me. See? Uh, and I don't yell that when I when I do that. I come in and I say, oh, you guys are goats. We're a real calm voice. I know, you got to know when to r rise it up and when to bring it down. Uh when to escalate it and when to de-escalate it. And uh, that just comes with experience. But unfortunately, in this day and time today, you young guys can't go out and just pick pick over, you know, this gym, this gym, this gym. They all have, have that somewhere in there. Uh, because the fact is, is that they probably do not have it in there. You have to look long and hard uh, to find trainers that uh, have the, the emotional knowledge in the gym. <clears throat> and But the good news is, young boxer, you have YouTube today. You have the Internet today. And you can go listen to these old guys. And uh, there's... Nothing that compares to these guys. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, a lot of them didn't talk much. They didn't want to give away what they were doing. Today, everybody's wanting to blab out everything they're doing, show every key aspect to their fighters, and just lay the information in the world's lap to beat up their own guys out of a false ego, an ignorant ego. So there's a lot of things going on today. I know young guys, I, I go around the block 20 times to get right back to the same spot. Uh, but listen to these old timers. Listen to these guys that they're, they've been dead and gone. They are preserved on, here on online. You can go listen to them. Take an hour a week. Uh, 
You don't have to do it at one time. Take 10, five minutes a day and go just look up great old trainer from the 1920s and listen to their quotes or uh, maybe their own film or uh, maybe some of their fighters were older at that time that said what they told them. And, uh, but the information's there. And go listen to what these guys are saying. Uh, go look at what these guys were doing. Everything's so modern now. You know, they're timing you in the 40s. Uh, uh, they're uh, counting your calories to, to, to the, the point where that under no circumstances is this thing over here allowed or this thing. And sometimes mixing is a lot better. And, uh, and it is for different people. And you've got to, young boxer, young athlete, understand that one size does not fit all. What worked for Vitaly Klitschko maybe didn't work for Mike Tyson. What worked for Mike Tyson maybe hasn't worked for Tyson Fury. And maybe none of those things will work for your body fit, your DNA, and the genes within your body uh, that you carry may not respond well to anything any of those guys have done. But, and it will be up to you to find uh, the happy medium there uh, to, to, to figure it out. Uh, there are folks out there that can figure it out, and that's how to spot a good trainer. The guy that's telling you, I, you know, everybody, you know, five guys over here are doing this, three guys are over here doing this, two guys are up here doing this. That's where you want to be. Uh, because a, a good trainer is going to be doing the majority of the, uh, from calisthenics to technical drills, uh, the particular fighter or, or little small group of fighters, they're going to have to do more in certain areas. And then these other guys over here are going to have to do more in other areas. And that's where you'll find a good gym. Uh, it is a sad day when you have excellent competitive boxers that are having trouble with push-ups or set-ups uh, or, or uh, pull-ups and different basic, basic things. Uh, and you know you got bad trainers around because they're not standing over these boys and ensuring that the building of the body to these young athletes is taking place with the technical stuff. So everything's a mix. If you're minus uh, calisthenic, uh, cardio type work, and you're, you got the best techniques in the world over here, it's not going to profit a fella too much. And, and, and vice versa, it's not going to profit. You've got to have a whole package and a whole plethora and monumental uh, training options to fit the fighter, to fit the fighter. Uh, so if young guys, when you walk into a gym and you see that there's differences, you go into a gym and the trainer says, well, come in, you know, next Wednesday, uh, I'm going to work out with you for 30 minutes. I'm going to have you do 20 to 10 different things, 20 different things. Uh, might have you spar for three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Uh, I need to see what you got. I need to see what you need. I need to figure out where you're strong and where you're weak, uh, where you're fast and where you're slow. Uh, th those are general in indicators of, boy, you're walking into a professional setting. So when you walk in and everybody's doing the same thing and you're just like an assembly line going across there, which a lot of gyms have to do to survive, not knocking that completely, but maybe you need to say, "Hey, I need to. I, I, I want to come here. Maybe I'll go through that gamut, but I, I need some extra individual type training." 
And if they offer that, then good. Uh, because you're not going to become uh, an Olympic medalist, uh, a national champion, or a world champion uh, doing the, the boxing assembly line thing on a daily basis. It's just not going to happen. Because you're going to run up on guys that are doing a thousand times more than that the, than the gym assembly line's doing. And you run up on them and they're going to break you like a toothpick. So be careful out there. Young fighters, look back in time. Sometimes you need to look behind you uh, and know what, what's going on behind you to figure out where you need to go. So do that. Much love to everybody. Thanks for listening to this video. This stuff was weighing on my heart. I'm not a great communicator, uh, but much love to you young boxers and young kids in general, whether, uh, whether you're a boxer or not, or whether you're an athlete or not. Uh, uh, much love to you. And, uh, and we'll just leave it there. I hope everybody, we're coming up on the weekend. Hope everybody has a good, fruitful weekend. Uh, to my Christian brothers and sisters, God bless you. Uh, to other folks, if you get to knock on the door, uh, first make sure it's the real king. And if it is, open that door. You'll be happy you did. Um, and we will see all of you soon. Thank you.